Hear me all right? Perfect. How's everybody doing at B-Size today? Thank you for coming. Good, good, good. Thank you for uh, coming to the last, one of the last talks. Um, I'm David Bressler and this presentation is about how to leverage uh, Maltigo within an uh, internal enterprise environment. Okay, generally Maltigo is uh, kind of used for gathering information from you know publicly available sources on the internet but let's let's move that functionality into a enterprise environment right <clears throat> so a little bit about me I'm a security consultant for guidepoint security I like to make things break things I have a little al alphabet soup um, I'm Boston link on Twitter you can always say hello and all, all of my, uh, my code that you'll see presented here is on my GitHub account. So if you want to just kind of look at the code or kind of play around, uh, feel free. So how many people know what Multigo is? Awesome. And how many people have actually used Multigo? Perfect. How many people have developed transforms for Multigo? Excellent. So just to get everybody on the same page, um, Multigo, created by Paterva out of South Africa, information gathering, uh, intelligence type of tool, reconnaissance, and it's re a really nice visual representation of data, right? I kind of, I find it pretty sexy. And it's really uh, customizable of what data you can uh, br bring in, okay? So why Multigo in the enterprise? First of all, single tool to gather information from different devices within your enterprise, as well as a high, you can do a high level analysis on that data, right? You can also write, easily write uh, custom transforms with different APIs. And my main thing is just think outside of the box, right? What type of data would be valuable to to, to kind of visualize. So kind of quick rundown, Multigo transforms, they're backend code or remote code that gathers the data and outputs it to, into a Multigo graph at a high level. Um, it creates what are called entities and every one of, the, one of these items you see on this sample graph is an entity, right? So besides boston.com, that's an entity. Everything else in this graph is an entity. <coughs> and it shows relationships, right? So I can see these are kind of built-in transforms. And going back a bit, I, I kind of jumped, I kind of jumped around, but um, so there are two types of transforms, remote and local, right? And I kind of, kind of uh, shipped, uh, built in with remote. So remote transforms pretty much run on remote uh, web application servers. And think of that as that web server acting kind of as a proxy for your Multigo client. So every time you, you, um, you right click and say run this transform within Multigo, your client will actually request that server to run that transform and that server will will you know output that data back to your client local transforms are pretty much the same thing as remote transforms the only thing is they run on your local system totally different right so they're running on your local system that you're running your multigo client on real quick um, these are a couple examples of a couple of transform packs that, that I wrote um, to kind of output attacking IP addresses and if they have any signatures within Palo Alto. So overall, if you're trying to develop transforms, which transform should you use, right? That's the big question. It really depends on your goal and architecture overall. If you're trying to integrate with internal systems and internal tools, Definitely local transforms all the way or an internal TDS server 
which is that remote web app application server, pretty much, that runs your transform for you. Except for it's not on the internet, it's in-house on your local LAN. <coughs> Uh, external data sources, I'd say, if, you know, local or remote, I'd probably go with remote transforms, just so I don't have to push out code, I could have that code running, you know, just on an external web server and have multiple people use it. So, there's several types of, of modules, you know, Python modules, PHP modules, that help you write um, transform packs, right? My personal favorite is the Canary framework. It just really, it kind of, it deals with all the output for you, right? So I, personally, I don't like XML. I, um, I'm just not a fan. I don't like building my own XML. I don't like outputting it. Don't really like any of that. So I, I, I could use Canary to actually just focus on the logic of my code and, and and parsing that data that I'm trying to input into a graph. It's really scalable and, um, and just really easy to install transforms across the board. So, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so overall, why integrate other uh, tools, right, within, within, within Multigo? Um, first of all, because it's awesome, right? Second of all, you can actually see the value of your data, right? So say if you have multiple data sets and um, you can compare those multiple data sets within one graph and say, what relationships do these data sets, these different data sets have, if any, right? Um, you can easily pivot from internal data, say, Okay, I integrated my IDS solution. It's, it has a signature for this external IP address that's communicating with these hosts on my LAN. Now let me, let me gain more information, external information on that external host, if any, right? By, by pivoting and utilizing built-in transforms or other transform packs. Make sense? Perfect. So, some of, some of my personal projects that at, at another position that I had that I integrated with uh, Palo Alto Networks kind of to give you a nice visual of their top, top attacker, um, vulnerability, virus, whatever it flags out into a Multigo graph, right? For the past 24 hours. Little example of that. This example, top attacker report. And you know, where it all fits in is, remember, multiple internal data sets, right? So uh, if I have this, and there, there are multiple external IPs here, and even internal IPs, I can say, all right, if I have a full packet capture solution within my environment, and I have that integrated into Multigo, I could just pivot from one of these IPs and say, are any other signatures or any other you know, flags or files or anything else involved with those sessions, right? Going to NW Multigo. NW Multigo was a one of my first projects that um, integrated NetWitness within Multigo that allowed you to actually query the NetWitness API for metadata pulled out of uh, network sessions. So a quick example of that, I don't know how well that looks to you guys. Well, so I started with an internal IP address and it flagged a um, emerging threat snort signature within that witness. I queried on that alert to say in that session that, 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 got, that created that alert, what file types w was, were in that? And this is the output of, of the file types, which you can't really see, it's pretty blurry, but it's Java jar files, um, Windows executables, and whatnot. And a few images as well. Further, I, I pivoted from, from that alert to the external IP address, 
right, within that same session, along with any other internal hosts that may have been communicating with that IP. And then keep on going to what other alerts may have been flagged in, in those other sessions to that, to that external IP address. And this you see is a black hole exploit kit alert with a PDF file associated with. Now, remember, multiple data sets. If, if I pull all these, all these files from this, this, these sessions out of NetWitness or any, pretty much any packet capture solution you have, I always like to run it through uh, Cuckoo, the Cuckoo Sandbox. So I wrote another integration to <laughs> remember one tool, multiple data sets, to actually point to a file and say, run this through Cuckoo, the Cuckoo Sandbox for analysis, and let me know when that analysis is finished. So it would output the analysis ID, and you can query down and say, all right, is any signatures associated with this file? Um, what type of files were possibly dropped on that, were dropped on that system within that analysis? Or did this file try to communicate with any, exter any external IPs? Okay. Wrapping, wrapping it all together, if it did communicate with any external IPs, you can always pivot back and go, say, back into your NetWitness um, transforms and run more queries to see on, on the actual sessions, all right? So, perfect. So when I was writing this, this talk and kind of putting all my ideas together, uh, I said, you know, kind of want to do a demo. I don't really have all these you know production systems on hand because I just recently switched uh, switched jobs but I wouldn't ha have them on hand anyway <laughs> so I said you know what let me just <laughs> let me just <laughs> let me, especially at B size right <laughs> yeah let me VPN into work um, <laughs> so you know I, I just downloaded a quick Nexpo's um, community edition kind of just Nexpo's Community Edition, because I work with Nexpo's a lot as well, and I can leverage it in my daily work. And I started to, to write some, some transforms for the Nexpo's API. So Nextigo pretty much allows you to launch a vulnerability scan from a, a host that, that you've been doing some reconnaissance on within Maltigo. Uh, it allows you to display port services, service versions, or fingerprints, um, vulnerabilities, metasploit modules, exploit DB exploits. All right. Just made this public on my GitHub account as well, so you can always uh, download that. So, that being said, let's get into the demos. All right, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but all my transform, pack, transform packs utilizes the community, uh, Canary framework. So within the Canary framework, once you install it and install a transform pack, you're gonna have a configuration file directory within your home directory, right? So right there, Canary. And what, that, what that holds is your transform pack configuration files. So if, it, if any of the transform packs need, you know, IP addresses or whatever, you know, any, any, any configuration, um, that's where it's going to be, be stored, right? Just quick note on that. And without those configuration files, none of this will work. Quick. 
I'm just I'm just in kind of my home segregated lab right now. So right here. So now my new this new transform pack gives you the ability. All right, well I got all this other information. I got DNS information. I got who is information. I got all this other, you know, kind of passive passive or active reconnaissance information on a host. Now what if you what if you add an active vulnerability scanning? Yeah, sure, it's not perfect. It probably won't identify all the vulnerabilities, what vulnerability solution does, but hey. I, I, I find it kind of useful. So I could just launch this scan. Hit the wrong button. So I could just launch this scan, and, and, what, that, and what that's going to do, going to create a site within uh, Nextpose and actually start the scan. Obviously. So. So we see the scans running right here, and what what that transform is doing right now is that it's 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 polling Nextpose's API and saying, what's the status of the scan? What's the status of the, of the scan? And once the scan completes, it's going to output a, a scan entity, right? <coughs> Where you, so no, it just keeps pulling. So to kind of save time, don't really want to wait here and uh, for that scan to be done. So this is what the output's going to look like, right? Now I can pivot off of this site, this scan site, and say, all right, this graph is just going to look horrible because of my resolution, but hey. I can either do two vulnerabilities or open ports, right? <coughs> Start with vulnerabilities. And this box is is a, is metasploitable too, so it's pretty vulnerable. As you can see, it's uh, it got a lot. So, kind of to drill down a little more, I want to I want to differentiate the vulnerabilities um, that that ha have publicly available exploits ag against the vulnerabilities that do not. Right. So I'm just going to run pretty much. Is do any of these vulnerabilities have exploits, uh, metasploit modules, or or exploit DB exploits, right? And Maltigo is just going to do its magic. Transforms are running on the back end. Perfect. So now I have a fairly, fairly big map of, or graph of vulnerabilities that have exploits versus vulnerabilities that do not have exploits, right? I personally like to keep my maps a little small, so, or my graphs. So what I'm going to do is just copy. So now I have a graph of all the vulnerabilities that pretty much don't have exploits versus, once I delete these. Now 
versus vulnerabilities that do, right? And you could have multiple views, whatever your preference is, to kind of say, all right, well, this is pretty cool. I can also select any one of these, go into the detail views, and kind of see, all right, what's the skill level of that Metasploit module and the actual URL? So I can just pull that up on the fly. Same with the exploit DB. Um, exploits, as you can see. And same with the vulnerabilities, right? In addition, I mean, this, all these transform packs will, will, will work with, um, with uh, the, com the community edition of Multigo, um, but the commercial version of Multigo has a nice, in, in my opinion, it really has a nice, uh, nice report export feature where I can just export all that information on that graph and actually have this, this as pretty much a record, right, of any reconnaissance I did on that host or any vulnerabilities that, that, that were, you know, found during that scan. Yes. So that ex explore information, is it coming from Multico or is it coming from next, next goes? Which information? Like when you click on the one of the dots. All this? This is all coming from Nexpose. Uh, Nexpose. Yep. So Nexpose says, uh, based on the, 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 the scan we run earlier. Absolutely. What's the, multi, what's the role Multigo playing here? Just generating this graph? Exactly. Multigo is just inputting the data and presenting it in, in a visual manner. My backend code is, is pulling that data from Nexpose, right? Kind of move forward. Clean this up a little bit. And also, you know, we could go back here and just quickly to ports. You know, enumerate all the open ports on, on that host. I can select the ports. Kind of, all right. What services did did Nexpose? Um, identify as running on those ports. Right. And just represent, kind of represent that in, in, in a nice visual manner as well. I mean, in my, in, in my opinion, you know, is, is this a must have? No, <laughs> not at all. But is it a nice to have? Absolutely, all right? And then further, I can, um, let me just, I can actually pivot on the services and say, well, select the services and say, show me the, the vulnerabilities associated with that, with that individual service, as well as once that outputs, as, um, show me the exploits from those vulnerabilities, just like I showed you in the other graph. Cool. All right. So, so to kind of put it all together, um, in my opinion, working with multiple internal data sets in a visual manner does multiple things for you and gives I mean, there's multiple value to it, right? You can easily compare the two different data sets or, or how, however many data sets you import into Multigo fairly easily and come, come up with a uh, you know, high level conclusion of what may be happening. It could also say if an analyst is using this in an investigation type of manner, they can actually pinpoint you know, data a lot easier that they actually have to dig, dig through a little more um, than just looking at 
kind of multiple tools, multiple logs, and everything else. <clears throat> because, I mean, overall, nobody really likes looking at something like this. You know, you could kind of grab it out, but I, you know, this will kind of make, at least me, look like this. <laughs> you know, and I don't like looking like that. <laughs> And uh, that's pretty much it. I just want to give a special, special thanks to God Point Security for sponsoring Boston B-Sides, for employing me, and uh, Paterva, Nadim Duba, he's the man. Rich Popson, Canary Framework, and everybody involved in the Canary Framework and developing with it. You know, if you're interested in this stuff, definitely check it out. You know, write, write some scripts, write some transforms. And uh, questions, feedback? Anything? Yes? So I would be interested in deploying this to a decentralized logging system, um, something like uh, ESM or Splunk. Yep. And um, have you done that at all? Personally, I've thought of it. My, my, my thoughts are pretty much that will be a pretty, pretty highly customized transform set for, for that organization, right? because everybody's inputting different logs and it'll be really hard to release you know just one general transform set i mean yeah you could release maybe like a base like yeah exactly and then people can add on to that per, you know to customize to their specific environment but i mean some organizations don't have have people to do that right well, I just have no idea what they're it, yeah it, it, exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I'm just curious about the Multigo in the way of exporting a real to a format that could be published on the web. Yep. What, I, I didn't catch that one more time. I was just wondering if there's an easy way of exporting Multigo output to a format that could be published on the web and still could be interactive. I mean, you could export, I believe, to CSV and Canary, the Canary framework actually has multiple. Um, I forget off the top of my head, but you can transfer a, a graph format into, a, I, I believe, CSV in another, another type of format. I mean, you could output an a image, interactive, not, not that I'm aware of it, you know. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you, actually, it's a good question. It, it, it really depends what, what, what you're trying to do, right? Um, so, so this is my GitHub account and these are pretty much my transform packs. So, I mean, it's, if, if you know any type of like scripting language, it's fairly easy. You can just export it to XM, you know, have the output be XML, in XML that Multigo will read, but utilizing the Canary framework, I mean, it's it's just it's pretty much a Python package, and so if I go in here and say, well, these are all my transforms uh, for for Nextigo, and within that, you know, it's pretty much just parsing data and outputting it, right? So it's Maybe a little learning curve, but it depends where you are with, with kind of scripting in general. You know, follow kind of a similar template format, like you're always going to have like, the dot form. Absolutely, absolutely. If you if you utilize the Canary Canary framework, yes, they will. They'll they'll all pretty much look like this. Anybody else? All right, that's all I got. Thank you.